Good evening, Mr. Pangalian. Always good to have you with us here in Bloomberg. You. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, as a business leader, I wanted to get your assessment of the elections. You know, PLDT is going through a digital pivot, but so is the country. Could you tell us about the role of technology and how it influenced the landscape of the elections? Well, I think the most uh, palpable uh, result of this technology thing is the, the pace at which we're getting all of this tabulation. Uh, I think it started as early as 6 p.m. tonight, no? which is roughly about an hour from the time polls close. Uh, certain precincts, I think, had their hours extended. So, as we speak, about 9.30 p.m., we now have more than 50% of the votes counted. Well, we made sure that PPCRV were, were well equipped. So we provided the telco facilities and the servers to them, even to the point of supplying the air conditioning. Uh, and we, we were connected to their transparency server. So we, we, on the part of TV5 and our affiliate stations, uh, this is one year in the planning. We made sure that we have a more than adequate computing capability and the data analytics are very important in trying to break down the, uh, the raw data that we get from the transparency server. So what you see is the data analytics being supplied by TV5 in terms of you know, presex, uh, towns, municipalities, cities, provinces, and regions. So. Uh, per candidate, uh, whether it's councillors, uh, mayors, vice mayors, governors, all the way to the presidency. Now, Mr. Panginer, you're looking at the infrastructure and also the technology provided, the you know, election institutions, but one of the things that also was striking to me was the role of social media here. How much did you see that influence the, both the process and the outcome in terms of voter education or empowerment? Well, it's there. We, we, uh, we, we've been tracking the the volume of data that goes through our network uh, on the social media side, and it's there. Now, it's, 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 it's not for me to say what the actual impact is on the, on the results of the election, but it, it certainly is there. It's an emerging, it's an emerging influence on uh, voters' preferences, and uh, you know, it's something to deal with, I think, the next, next election. So. And certainly the Bilang Pilipino website also with its user-generated apps did give a form of participation to a lot of voters, especially first-time voters using social media as well. Yeah, including, including voter sentiment from time to time. Yeah. Well, Mr. Bagley, let me shift now into your assessment of the outgoing administration. What do you feel are the issues that need to be carried over into the current administration or the new administration for prioritization? <sighs> well, <laughs> I think... I think the uh, next president, the presumptive candidate as we speak tonight is Mayor Duterte, will, will, uh, will face, I think, the many issues that the current administration has faced, you know, education, health, and I think Mayor Duterte mentioned that in his speech uh, before the MAP and the Makati Business Club, uh, you know, uh, infrastructure, traffic, uh, which he dealt with, uh, perhaps in not as much detail as he should probably have, but it's there. So. Um, the, the uh, focal point of his uh, admi administration seems to be criminality and law and order, as it was in the case of uh, President Aquino, good governance and anti-corruption. But uh, there are collateral issues, as, as you know, uh, health, jobs, education. The social so services. As he, as he must deal with. No? So uh, any CEO, even of a corporation, will find out that when he sits on his uh, chair that uh, you know, gosh, there are many more issues <laughs> that I thought there would the be. The complexity you know? arises, which is And in. there are many things you cannot do uh, that you thought you could do uh, once you're there. So right? as you found out your boundaries and your limitations as well. Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. one of the things that has some boundaries and limitations is the field of infrastructure. Now, the MPP group has a great space and footprint in the infrastructure space. Let's talk about what you'd like to see the new government do in terms of enticing more investments and predictability in that sector. Well, I think the list of infrastructure pro projects have been, have been uh, fairly well defined by the Aquino administration. Uh, there could be more, uh, like the heavy rail system, both up north and, uh, and down south. I think it just needs better definition under the administration. So it's just a question of pushing out those projects, uh, not in a helter-skelter way, but in, in the orderly way that was implemented by the Aquino administration, but with a bit more pace, maybe a more, more decisiveness. No? Because these, these are... Uh, pro these are good projects, bar none, and these projects, the infra projects, are, are projects that the country, that the people really need. No? So uh, I do hope the pace would quicken, but the, but the system should be as transparent and as orderly as possible. 
Well, finally, let's talk about the region. Uh, one of the tickling issues and the elephant in the room is obviously what's going on in the West Philippine Sea. There are both uh, trade, energy, and peace stability issues there. From a business point of view, and with you know re interest in the region, what would you see the next president do and have to do about the West Philippine Sea issue? Well, to my earlier point, the the West Philippine Sea, uh, because we have some familiarity with it, with the concession we have. Uh, out there in the Reed Bank, uh, it's 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 a certainly a more complex issue than what, than what it's made out to be. Uh, there's the obviously the legal point, which I think uh, uh, is quite important to the country about about sovereignty. That's why uh, we have filed an arbitration case uh, internationally. And the Hague ruling may be out in the third quarter, based on some estimates. Yes. Um, the question is, uh, is it enforceable with China? And I think very unlikely that China will adhere to any, to any uh, decision that is foreign to, to it. No? Um, the, the economic matter relates to our relationship with China. It is the 800-pound gorilla in the neighborhood. So from an economic perspective, you have to deal with China. They're a military and economic superpower. I think the Philippines must be able to define what its economic, commercial, trade, and financial policy with China is. Uh, you can't escape that. No? Then, of course, uh, so the Delhi sovereignty, economic issues. Of course, the matter of enforcing your rights in the West Philippine Sea. Uh, as you know, China's built yes. a fairly large... Like all these structures already within the so region. You just cannot go in without provoking a war uh, in there. Uh, so it's, it's a very complex issue and what, one that's need uh, very deft handling. Now China, what's important to China is its face. No? Uh, so uh, I've always been told by certain Chinese officials that uh, well, I think I mean, uh, Ambassador Zhao was quoted yesterday, I think, about you know, hoping to be able to open a new chapter in the new relations. With the new administration, yes. Better relations. Uh, you no, know, you could take the cue and say, okay, what does that really mean? Uh, they've taken, I think, uh, the view that we should set aside the issue of sovereignty and just talk about a business uh, from an economic perspective. From a pragmatic perspective, yes. Yeah, that's not, that's not wrong, but uh, because no president can forsake the sovereignty over, its, uh, over the islands of the Philippines, he will get impeached for sure, right? So. So uh, how you deal with that is a very, very, very touching issue. Well, Mr. Pangalini, it's certainly a full agenda. I appreciate your insights in helping set that for the next president. Always have the good to have you with us. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you very good much. Good to be here. Yeah.